What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again with another 2014 fantasy football season preview. And with this video, I am going to be taking a look at the tight end position as we head into the season. Now, guys, the tight end position is one where I think there's a lot of discrepancy. There's a big drop off after the elite level of guys down to the lower level of guys. So this is a position where a lot of times your season will be quietly made or broken. So definitely pay attention to this video because I'm going to go over my guys who I have as my top 10 tight ends, and I want to make sure that I go over in detail each one of them so that you guys can make an educated decision based on the draft position that you have to take these guys in and the type of numbers that they're likely to produce. So with that being said, guys, let's get into it right away. We're going to be starting off with number 10, which is Dennis Pitta of the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Pitta actually missed the first 12 games of the 2013 season after undergoing hip surgery in the preseason, and it looked as if he was probably going to miss the entire year, but he worked really, really hard to get back on the field and eventually made his season debut in week 13, where he caught six passes, including a touchdown. And by the end of the season, Pitta was arguably Joe Flacco's favorite target. He caught eight passes in the team's final game of the year. And although he's not necessarily the sexy name that some of these other tight ends have, he does quietly have pretty good numbers. In 2012, he caught 61 passes for 669 yards and seven touchdowns. So if you miss out on one of the other top tight ends, I like Pitta as a low-end tight end one who could and should produce fairly consistently, and he still has a decent amount of upside, so I definitely like him here at number 10. Moving forward to number 9, and we have Washington Redskins tight end Jordan Reed, who is one of the hottest names moving up the preseason rankings this season. Now, Reed was a third-round NFL draft pick this past season and actually really started to produce at a high level from weeks 10 through uh, what? Well, I guess it was week 7 through 10, excuse me. And during that span, he actually caught 27 passes for 323 yards and two touchdowns. So that, that was a pretty good stretch for him. He was getting, uh, what, 80 yards a game almost. And that's pretty nice. That's the kind of uh, numbers that you would absolutely love to have out of a tight end. But then came week 11 against the Eagles when he suffered a concussion. And unfortunately, Reed was never quite able to recover from that. He was eventually placed on season-ending injured reserve. And unfortunately, that was just kind of the final thing that we saw from him. Um, we haven't really seen a whole lot from him in the preseason, but the skills are absolutely there for this guy. He's very, very quick for a tight end, and RG3 really seems to trust him. So there's obviously some risk here with the, the concussion history and you know other little things that have come up here and there, but the upside for, for Jordan Reed, the upside is awesome. I mean, it, you could realistically be looking at the next great tight end. And that's the kind of skill that this guy possesses. So I think he's an easy top 10 tight end, especially when you consider that the guys ranked immediately above him here. Um, and then the guys that are ranked like 11 through 15, where kind of where he's going on average, these guys aren't necessarily guys that have the high end potential that Jordan Reed does. So I do like that out of him. But again, th that comes with some risk. So let's move on to number eight, where we're going to be looking at Vikings tight end Kyle Rudolph. And he is also a former high round draft pick. He was a second round pick uh, by the Minnesota Vikings. And he's another guy who's moved up the draft boards this offseason, largely because the Vikings hired tight end or the former uh, offensive coordinator for the uh, Cleveland Browns and also a former head coach, Norv Turner. And North Turner actually has a history of producing really great numbers out of the tight end position. And that includes Antonio Gates. That includes Jordan Cameron this past season. So I personally think that that is getting a little bit overblown. Um, not to say that it's not something that's relevant because I definitely think it is. But I think that sometimes people get a little bit over anxious looking at, oh, well, he's done this with previous players and he's done this with this guy. Kyle Rudolph is not Antonio Gates, okay? Um, Kyle Rudolph has talent, but he's not that level of, you know, 15 touchdown type of guy, in my opinion. 
But at the same time, Rudolph him himself has done well before North Turner got there. I mean, in 2012, he made nine touchdown receptions. So there is the possibility that he does end up being a top five tight end this season. Now, I don't likely assume that he's going to get to 10 touchdowns, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets 800 yards, and I wouldn't be surprised if he makes six to eight touchdowns this year. And if he does that, he's going to be an absolute lock as a top 10 fantasy tight end at the end of the year. So as your number eight tight end and somebody that you don't have to draft early, I really like Kyle Rudolph. I think the value is there. Moving on to number seven, we have Carolina Panthers tight end, Greg Olson. Now this one is an interesting situation because with both Steve Smith and Brandon LaFell leaving Carolina this offseason, Greg Olson is the only guy remaining who seems to have any chemistry with Cam Newton. And although we tend to have a little bit of a tendency to overhype that kind of stuff when we're talking about fantasy football, in this case, I really do think it matters because Cam Newton is not at the level where he's able to turn receivers into elite guys. He doesn't, he isn't Peyton Manning where it's like, you know, anything that he touches turns to gold. He needs somebody that he's comfortable with. Now, Greg Olson has back-to-back -back seasons with over 800 yards, and he's a good bet to score somewhere between five to seven touchdowns this season. Consistency like that is very tough to come by out of the tight end position, and that's why I like him as a reliable tight end one in fantasy football this season. I think you can draft him fairly late, just like uh, Kyle Rudolph, but I think that he is even a little bit more secure in his role than Kyle Rudolph is in the Vikings offense. So I do like him a lot. Let's move on, though, to number six, which is the tight end from my favorite team and a guy who I think should eventually be a Hall of Famer, and that is, of course, Jason Witten. 73 catches for 851 yards is normally a career high for just about every other tight end that's ever played the game. But for Jason Witten, it's actually his lowest yardage total and his lowest catch total since 2006. Think about that. He had 851 yards, and that was his lowest number since 2006. So while I think it's worth noting that Witten is, is definitely slowing down and he's now 32 years old, he's still one of the most reliable fantasy tight ends that you're ever going to find. I fully expect that the Cowboys are going to pass the ball over 600 times this season, and that should mean another really nice fantasy season out of Jason Witten. Now, I'm not sure that he has the ability to be a top three fantasy tight end anymore, but he's a great bet to be a guy who finishes in the top six, and that's why I have him ranked number six. Like I said, the security, the the trust that Tony Romo has in him, he is going to make a ton of catches. He's going to get a bunch of yards. I don't expect him to hit eight touchdowns again like he did this past year, but even if he gets six with, let's say, 80 catches, that's an excellent fantasy season. He is definitely going to be a guy that you want on your fantasy roster if he does that. Moving forward to number five, and we have a guy that broke out this past season because he was one of the biggest sleeper tight ends on people's lists going into 2013, and he absolutely made those people look brilliant. He was playing in a North Turner offense, and that definitely helped Jordan Cameron of the Cleveland Browns produce an 80-catch, 917-yard, seven-touchdown season. Now, Cameron is fully entrenched as one of the top five fantasy tight ends going into this season, but it's worth considering that North Turner is now in Minnesota. Now, that being said, that's a negative, but the positive is that, well, I, I guess it's it's kind of hard because I, I look at it as a little bit of a positive that Josh Gordon is actually probably going to miss most of the 2014 season, if not the entire season, but I definitely hear where people are coming from when they say that not having that elite target out wide in Josh Gordon is going to leave more coverage underneath for Jordan, for Jordan Cameron. So there's a little bit of something to think about there. You've got some negatives with North Turner leaving. Like I said, you've got a little bit of a negative with Josh Gordon being out because he is not going to be able to pull the defense away. But at the same time, the positive is that Jordan Cameron is likely going to be the top guy as far as the number of targets going to him this season. And that's something that not many teams have. Most teams do not have their tight end lead them in targets. And I would be surprised if anyone else ends up being the target leader in Cleveland. It would have to probably be Miles Austin, if anybody. But we've seen Miles Austin and suffer injury after injury after injury, and there's just no reason to believe that he's going to play every game. So with that being said, I mean, Jordan Cameron, like I said, is probably going to lead this team in targets. And if he does that, if he gains 
any chemistry with Brian Hoyer or Johnny Manziel, whoever ends up being the starter, he should be a nice fantasy option at a very, very thin tight end position. I like Jordan Cameron a lot this year, and I have him at number five as my t- as my fantasy tight end rankings go. Moving on to number four, and we have a guy who was a lot of people were a little bit down on him going into the 2013 season because the team, the San Francisco 49ers, were transferring from Alex Smith to Colin Kaepernick. And that had a lot of people worried about Vernon Davis as as uh, being an elite fantasy tight end. But Davis answered those concerns and then some this past season. He made 850 yards of offense and scored 13 touchdowns. He's absolutely an elite fantasy tight end, and even though Michael Crabtree's return might eat into his total number of targets, Davis really makes his money in the red zone, and that's where I think he's actually going to see an improvement in the, in terms of at least the, the quality of the targets that he's getting, because defenses are going to have to try and stop Michael Crabtree, and that's going to leave linebackers, potentially safeties up against Vernon Davis, and he is just going to abuse them in the red zone. I like him for another double-digit touchdown season this year, and I definitely think he is a great tight end number four here overall. He is going to be a rock-solid tight end one for you on your fantasy team. I absolutely love Vernon Davis going into the 2014 season. Moving on to number three, and we have the poster boy for the if he's healthy phrase, Rob Gronkowski of the New England Patriots. This guy is perhaps the most injury-prone, elite-level player that we have seen in the past decade. But with that being said, he produces at an absolutely ridiculous level when he is on the field. In the 50 total games that Rob Gronkowski has played in in the regular season, he scored 42 touchdowns. 42 touchdowns in 50 games. That's incredible. To put that into context, Jimmy Graham has one fewer career touchdown despite playing in 12 more games. The only concern here is the injury history, and obviously it's a big one. If we knew that Gronkowski was going to be healthy, though, I would be advocating Rob Gronkowski as a first-round pick. But because of his history, I don't recommend him anywhere earlier than the third round. I think that if you take him in the second, it's too early. And with that being said, guys, let's move on to number two, and that is a guy who broke out this past season after being a training camp darling in the first two seasons of his career, and that is Julius Thomas. Julius Thomas of the Denver Broncos finally lived up to the hype in in 2013 when he became Denver's starting tight end. He made 65 catches for 788 yards and 12 touchdowns despite missing two games with an injury. Thomas showed us that not only does he have the physical skills himself to be a fantasy stud, but he also has the trust of Peyton Manning, especially in the red zone. If it wasn't for Jimmy Graham, I would be very happy to have Julius Thomas as my number one overall fantasy tight end. He's that good. The Denver offense is going to be crazy good yet again, and a double-digit fantasy touchdown season is a very good possibility for Julius Thomas. I think he's, I think that I would probably say that he's best picked as an early third round pick, but I'm really not opposed to taking him at the end of the second round if you don't like what's falling to you there. If you can get elite production out of the tight end position, it gives you such an advantage, and uh, Julius Thomas, I think, is a very, very likely player to give you that this season. Finally, we have a player who, at this point, I just don't know what more can be said about him. I mean, Jimmy Graham of the New Orleans Saints is absolutely ridiculous. He made 80, 86 catches for 1,215 yards and 16 touchdowns in 2013. Those are elite level wide receiver numbers coming from the tight end position. And because of the lack of depth at tight end, Jimmy Graham's value is huge. I've seen him go as high as number four overall in fantasy drafts this preseason, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. I mean, personally, he's my number seven overall player, but I don't see any reason to believe that he won't be the top scoring fantasy tight end yet again. And like I said with Julius Thomas just a moment ago, if you're getting elite level production out of the tight end position and you get the type of numbers that he put up in 2013, Jimmy Graham is a top three pick, a top two pick even possibly, because he's that much better than the other guys. If you consider that you're getting 16 touchdowns and 1,200 yards out of your tight end while somebody else in your league is only getting 500 yards and four touchdowns or six touchdowns out of their tight end, think about how many fantasy points that is. There's a a 10 touchdown and a 700-yard gap between those two players. 
And that's what's going to happen. There aren't going to be 12 tight ends in your 12 tight end or in your 12 team leagues for everybody. So if you can get an advantage at the tight end position, I highly, highly recommend it. Like I said, I have him as my number seven overall player. He's behind the top four running backs, which are again, Jamal Charles, LaShawn McCoy, Adrian Peterson, and Matt Forte. Then I have him behind Calvin Johnson. And then I last have him behind Peyton Manning. But other than that, I, and, and it, to be honest with you, I could see him going as high, like I said, as number three or four overall. I really don't don't have a problem with it. It's just my personal preference is that I want to make sure that I lock up running back and you know that's tough to do if you take a tight end in the first round. So with that being said, like I said, I have him at number seven. I think he is an absolute rock star of a player. He's the kind of guy that you build a championship around and Jimmy Graham will absolutely be on fantasy football rosters. As long as he stays healthy, he will be on championship fantasy football rosters this season. So consider him at the end of your first round. If you don't like what slipped to you, if none of the elite running backs slipped to you, and for some reason you're sitting there at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and Jimmy Graham's on the board, do not feel bad about taking him. I know it's a tight end, but guys, trust me, he is a beast. He is going to be very, very good this season. There's no reason to think that he's going to drop off significantly. And if he comes even close to what he did last year, he is going to be an amazing pick for you. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you press that like button below. Don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you think on today's video. If you like the, the ratings, if you disagree with them, if you have a player that's not in the top 10 of my list that you think should be, let me know in the comment section below and I want to kind of banter back and forth with you in the comment section about it because uh, if you have questions I can definitely answer those as well so thank you guys if you're new to the channel make sure you press that subscribe button and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon